All right, I'm going to read you some new and old. Uh, we'll start off with uh, this one. It's called January Hasta. On stepping out onto the porch, you are cold cocked by Storm Brent. The door slams shut behind you, barring entry as you back paddle. Aghast, the wind hooks at your loose jaw. The dog howls. This is not a day for anyone. Crawl deeper into your coat. And grog-eyed, you watch as blackbirds rise over hedgerow, making their break, but to where? They slip, bob, and weave for nothing, and are roundhoused on rooftops. The face of the flock bursts like a split lip, and the dog yowls. Breathe it in. Loosen the leash. Dance it up. In this surge, if you don't shift, you don't move. Lifted up by the shop-worn pines, see how the entire horizon's upended. Gouts of sea spray sting your vision, and where, low, is the dog? All this, you think, all this and more, sunk-eyed, strafing across the floor. Explain how being punched so squarely in the face can leave a smile there. There's life within this land-lashing moment blow by blow by blow and while the ring of England shrinks hear the roar outside the ropes thank you this one's literally about a pair of scissors two sharp fangs this coupling is no tongue all teeth after napping for so long on top of one another they are starved of want, and they've started to conspire. Who will make the first cut? Hook your little fingers through their eyes and open. Our two companions look ready to split. Only their commitment to the task in hand keeps them conjoint. And now there's no going back. You must decide your design. What's to become less than itself? What sum might be greater in pieces? The world out there is far too long, and your friends here are the remedy. Sure, there's always a little harm in the cure. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, this one's about uh, being on my uh, granddad's farm. It's called Wasp Harp. Listen, there are musicians flying in the rafters, nooked high in the byre. Hear their drony om, like the song on a Sunday midsummer, a distant neighbour mowing the lawn. Nestled in a loose beekeeper smock, climb into the gables and moon-eyed marvel at their architecture, a grey paper harmonica crafted from wood, mud and spit. Get closer now and hive as that low hum rises. Bodies piping out like notes. This entire comb sings in a work song of warning. Then come again in winter when the crowds are long gone. And the sight of an entire theatre emptied at the frost's first bite. The machine has crumpled. The jaw harp is pulverised. But all this broken in a way you don't say is sombre or forlorn. Maybe this old organ remembers what was shaped there and performed. Thank you. <laughs> Got time for one, two? Uh, I reckon time for one. Or All right, I'll be very so picky then. Um, so this is a collection uh, released with uh, the wonderful Sheree Weber, London photographer last year. I think she's in the room hiding around somewhere. Um, yeah, it's a collection of uh, poetry and uh, uh, photography um, all around the idea of moving through Norfolk through like Fenlands and Boglands and strange forestlands too. Um, yeah. I'll read to you this one. Uh, the Farrier. From an old sack still half his age, he feeds red apples to his horses, telling them the secrets of his sacrifices. 
They take gouts of sweet white, coring the soft spheres in moments, listening only for low, continual sound. George was big on his watches. He said, prize them open, remove their brightened sides. But he lacked the drilling to make them work again. And we were left with just bits and pieces. Rob, he had a hand and eye for paint, portraits of his likeness, and mine too. But not content, he defaced them in the end, and his blank canvas still line our walls, collecting dust. He does not know, but he does, that while they may have believed he loved more his horses, it is his boy's ghosts he marches over the fields. Thank you very much.